Now today I will talk about joyful victory. Joyful victory is a teaching to encourage people that it's not hard to enter us serving God, you know, to start to serve God. It's not hard to handle problems in life. Because many people say, I'm too weak, I have too many sins. I'm too many emotional problems, it's hard for me to serve God. Now this teaching, you know, what lets you know what you have to face in order to serve God. Okay, there are three parts of joyful victory. And there are ten points with these three main points. The first main part is to live in the love, the provision, and the plan of God. The first part. And the second part is to handle different problems in life. And the third part is to have fruit of uh, the Holy Spirit and also fruit of ministry. What it means is that if we Live in the love of God, the provision and the plan of God. We know that God is helping us to do, you know, to serve God. And then we need to take care of different problems in life. I will tell you simple and workable methods to take care of different problems in life. And after that you can start to, you know, to have fruit of the Holy Spirit and also to serve God. Now for the first part, you know, because of time, I'm just going to go through this whole teaching uh, in one uh, long session or one day so you know this teaching if I split it up it can go for a few days but I'm going to summarize it quickly okay now the first the first part yeah. to live in a you know the, the under the first part there are three points first to live in the love of God and then the provision of God and then the perfect plan of God which I'll go over very quickly now to live in the love of God we already talked about. Now let me ask you, for this last two days have you been trying to say, yes I, God is loving me, God is blessing me, God is helping me, God is with me all the time. Do you declare that? Yes. Do you find any difference? Yes. Do you do you have more joy and strength? And okay. Okay. Now we don't have time. If we have time, we'll ask you to share how different it is. So whenever you face any difficulty, you say, "God is with me now, helping me to face this problem." And God accepts me as I am. And God gives me strength and joy. So that I have strength to face any difficulty. Now the second part is God's provision. 
for many people they are afraid to serve God because they say, you know, I have no money, I, I'm in need of money. So they try their own way to earn money. But in Matthew 6.33 it says that seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness and all these things will be added to you. That when we seek God's kingdom. That means first I want I want to bring more people in the kingdom of God to believe in Jesus. Now I hope you remember these two meanings. First, to bring more people in the kingdom of God. And the second is that where, wherever that God is the king, there is his kingdom. So I let God rule my heart totally. I, I let God rule my life in my family, in my church, in my place of work. And seeking His righteousness means to obey God. And when we do that, God will add all these things to us. Let me ask you, how many of you have experienced help you financially uh, in the past that you have noticed that God used some special ways to help you financially. Well, I thank God that, that you have experienced that. Now, let me ask you, in the future, do you believe that God can help you financially? Good, good. Now, of course I don't mean that we don't work. We do work. But we believe that it's God who provides for the job and also uh, income for us. Okay. Now this part I won't go into detail. And the third part is God has a wonderful plan. Third point. God has a wonderful plan in our life. In Psalm 139, verse 16 to 17, you can write this down. Zabuli chikumi asatu muenda, ole kumi na mukaga na kumi na msamvu. Zabuli chikumi asatu muenda, kumi na mukaga na kumi na msamvu. All now, the starting with the second part of the middle of verse 16. Me na chani kila mu chun 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 kumi na mukaga. All the days ordained for me were written in your book before one of them came to be. How precious to me are your thoughts, God. How vast is the sum of them. What it says here is that all the days ordained for my life were already written in your book in heaven. And when God wrote the plan for your life, would He write that you'll be miserable, you'll be poor, you'll be. Suffering? No, for each person, He has a wonderful plan. Hallelujah. And in verse 17 it says that how precious to me are your thoughts. So God's thoughts for us are very precious, are very good. He has made up his mind to bless your whole life. It's all written in heaven. And it's very, very good. But let me tell you, not everyone enters that plan. You look at Romans 12, 1-2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your body as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is a true and proper worship. Do not conform to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. 
Tichemvanga mbegai na Buganda au risa cha katunda. Timuenga yemvili jamu na sada kena mu. Esimi esima esimi wa elesa ni katunda. Ela amule mofa na niswa ngo amule mbeguno na imwa ni simuenga uloku zovute dosa zamu. Amen. That means in order to enter God's plan, there are three things we need to do here according to this verse. To offer a body as a living sacrifice. My life is yours, Lord. Please use my life. And then the second is to not be conformed to the world. The people in the world pursue money and uh, adultery. And pleasure in the world. But we don't follow the way. But we renew by the transforming of our mind. Then our mind is renewed. Then we can find out God's perfect pleasing and our goodwill. Now, because many Christians will say, I heard one Christian told me, I don't believe God has a plan for my life. Because she said, I had a divorce. I have a lot of pain. I don't believe that God planned all this for me. Now why do many Christians suffer? That seems that the life is not going anywhere. Why? Because they haven't dedicated the life to God. And they're following the temper, their, you know, their uh, desires. So the marriage breaks up easily. And then they don't know how to handle the problems. So let me ask you, how far have you dedicated your life to God? How far have you turned away from the worldly ways? How far is your mind transformed so that you can enter God's plan? Let me ask you the question in another way. Are you satisfied with the first part of your life so far? If the rest of your life is like the first part of your life, are you satisfied? Now, if you are not satisfied, that means you have not entered the plan of God enough. Because if you have entered the plan of God enough, then you'll be, you know, you will really make the best use of life and you will be happy with your life now of course each person needs to grow more to enter God's plan more after I experience the Holy Spirit I think that I'm entering God's plan much more. But I still believe I can enter His plan much, much more. Because there is no limit to His plan. His plan is so good you cannot imagine. Can you? Declare every day and say, God has something wonderful planned for me for my life. I want to enter that life more and more today. And the more I enter it, the more I enjoy it. Okay, now, can you think of some ways you can enter God's plan? to handle your problems in life 
If you can think of some ways you can enter God's plan more, please start working on it. Okay, now the second part of joyful victory is to how to handle different problems in life. And then there are, uh, just now we talked about three points, remember? The first part, three points, and then now is four, five, six, seven, eight. Five points on handling different problems. Now just now we said, first live in the love of God, that's the first part. And the second point, live in his provision and the third is live in his perfect plan and then the next point is how not to be affected by people now i've put this as the first point to handle our life because negative influence from people are the number one killer of Christian's life. Have you noticed how many people around you made you unhappy? And take away your joy. Give you fresh a pressure. And even in the church, you find that some Christians make it hard for you to live out the Christian life. Have you noticed that? The biggest negative influence of us are from people. They might criticize us. They might say negative things to us. They might be nagging us. They may be, you know, uh, self-righteous that say they are very good and you're not good enough. Using the law upon us. Let me ask you, have you noticed that people around you have made you, give you pressure and made you unhappy? Have you noticed that? Now, at the same time, God brought blessings for us through people too. But most people have some problems. Now one common thing is that when someone says to you, Ah, you're no good, you're not doing well. Sometimes not just the word, the expression. They don't like you. And then many people will feel very unhappy. Oh, he's unhappy with me today. And then when you go to church or when you go to work, you say, I'm, ha I'm unhappy today. And, and then you might think about it for days or months. And then, you know, it makes you feel frustrated in your life. Have you had experiences like that? Now, most people have, you know, these negative thoughts, these people around me make, me, make it hard for me to live a joyful Christian life. Now, the, the big, big reason why people it brings suffering to us is you know the biggest reason why the reason is all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God because people have a tendency now including us we have to say including us have a tendency to look at the negative things when you have done something good they always they don't look at it they look at how you haven't done how you have done something bad 
So, if you have done something well today, like you leave worship very well, or you, or you help someone to believe in Jesus, and then they will remind you, how you did not do so well some other day, or when you were singing, you were off the, the notes today. Or you brought the person to Jesus, but that Jesus doesn't, but that person doesn't follow Jesus. Or they will say, you have brought a number of people to Jesus, but they all left the church already. Or in the family, they will say, you didn't do the chores enough. Because human nature has a tendency to be, let me ask you, positive or negative. Yes. So when they're negative, those words are they pleasant or not? Are they are those words they say? Pleasant or not? No, no, no. Not pleasant. Now, so God gave me this teaching. People are precious in the sight of God. But because of the sin of people, the negative words are like garbage. Do you like to eat garbage? Do you want to eat the dirt out there? Do you want, if your food falls to the ground, do you want, still want to eat it? Now, we know that. Now, if someone gives you some delicious food, and then before he gives it to you, he puts some dirt into it. Will you still eat it? You won't eat it because you know there is garbage in there. But let me tell you, related to people, people have the habit of eating garbage. All the negative things they say, people would keep thinking about it and get angry because of it. I use an illustration. If someone get a part of a dung from the restroom and pour it at you, what will you do? What will you do? You will run away, right? Yes. You, you will change your clothes and wash yourselves. What if someone gets the tongue over his body, but he doesn't wash it every day? I mean, actually, he doesn't wash it at all. And every day he smells it. It's, it's terrible. <laughs> Why did he pour it at me? <laughs> and every day he did not wash it, and every day he smelled it. And it's terrible. <laughs> Let me ask you would you do something like this? You won't do it, right? But let me tell you, when people hear the garbage from other people, they keep doing it every day. They will say, this person is terrible. He always says this negative words to me. He said, I'm foolish. And I'm not foolish. He said, I'm useless. He is useless. <laughs> and then people keep thinking about what they said and keep getting angry and keep getting frustrated or they will say 
These people don't like me. No matter how I do, how, how well I do, they still don't like me. So we take all this into our hearts. It's like the person has done over his body. He keep remembering it. Keep smelling it. Keep being unhappy. Let me ask you, does it make sense? Does it make sense? But do people do that? Do people do that? And do you do that? I mean, do you get stay unhappy? Oh, they, they don't like me. Do you, do you stay unhappy? Do you think about what they did to you? Now, if you can overcome that, I'm saying you have a victorious life. Amen. But I tell you, most people cannot get over it. Most, most people just keep thinking about it. And be very unhappy about it. Isn't it true? Does it do good to your spiritual life? And does it make you feel live happily? The number one reason why many people don't live happily is because of this negative influence. But when we discern this is from his sinful nature or from the accusation, or from the accusation of Satan do we want to take it? We we'll say we don't want to take it. But but our human nature says it's unfair. Ah, Let me ask you. Have you had that feeling? It's unfair. I have to do something back. I have to pay him back. I have to be angry at him. I will continue to dislike him. Let me ask you, has that happened to you? Has it happened to you? Yes. Actually, it happens to everyone. And we did not know that. When we do that, we are eating garbage. We are eating garbage. And, and that is why we have pain. But you say, how can I overcome that? When my husband or wife or my family members, they treat me so badly. Now imagine, you know, if your husband or wife or his family member yell at you every day and is not responsible, would it make you unhappy? It will naturally make you unhappy, right? But we know this is garbage. The point is how to handle it. So first we discern, we know that it came from their sinful nature. Okay, some, some Psalm 118 verse 6. The Lord is with me. I will not be afraid. What can people do to me? What it says is that the Lord is with me. I will not be afraid of anyone. What can people do to me? Let me ask you. Just now we talk about God is a wonderful plan in your life. Can any person destroy their plan? No. No, no way. 
When they yell at you, can they destroy the plan? When they hurt you, can they take away the plan? Nobody can. But when we take it seriously, when your close family members are unpleasant to you, and then every day you're unhappy, and angry. When you're unhappy, when you're unhappy and angry every day, can you live out the perfect plan of God? No. So we have to discern that. They cannot destroy God's plan. They can keep being angry, but I will turn it off. Now, how to turn it off? Basically, regarded as garbage. But the person is not garbage. The person is precious. But because he is in sin, so what he said, the unpleasant words are garbage. So, so when he says, I don't like you, or his expression shows that he shows that he doesn't like you. What is the reaction of most people? Oh, my husband, my wife doesn't like me. Oh, I'm unhappy. <coughs> Sorry. So they're taking it totally. But we don't have to take it. I can say God likes me. Even if many people, the non Christians, or even some weak Christians, don't like me, they still don't like me. It doesn't matter. Because I still have my value. I'm special in the plan of God. Now let me tell you. Everyone has a special part in God's plan. Now, do you ever play chess, some kind of chess? Now, I used this stand here with many dots here to show you know, this holes, this holes, okay? This holes. Each hole represents, I mean, I, I'm just using an illustration, represents a person. And then, this, all these people together will, will perform God's plan. And if everyone performed the plan of God very well, God's love and work will manifest in this world in a great way. And God's blessings will come to Uganda and to the whole world. But the fact is, many of these Christians are not doing his part. Many of them are unhappy and weak. Now it's like this tent. You see six poles. Now these six poles are all strong now. Can you imagine if two of the poles or three of the poles are broken? How is the tent? The tent will fall down, right? Will not be strong. And then the other three poles have to rearrange themselves to make the tent stand. But it's still not very good. Let me tell you, in the whole church in the world, let me ask you, are there more strong Christians or more weak Christians? Weak Christians, there are more weak Christians. That's 
That's why many people don't want to believe in Jesus. Because they saw the life of these weak Christians. These Christians are unhappy, are selfish, they easily get angry. And, and hurt other people. And so people have a bad impression of Christians. And they don't see the power of the Holy Spirit in their lives. So when we eat garbage from people, the result is we have all kinds of worms in our body. Do you like worms in your body? Does it do good to you? In fact, to see an amphana, I want to have a garden fana. No. But how do we handle it? Okay, now, if this person has been talking negatively to you, let me ask you, will he stop easily? Will he stop easily? He won't stop easily. But you say, whatever he says, he said, I don't like you. Why do you go to church so much? You don't, uh, and, then, and then complain about you. Now, whatever he says, we have to learn to turn off. Uh, he said, I don't like you. Now, we don't have to argue with him. Because if we argue with him, he will complain more. But we can say something back wisely. He says, I don't like you. We can say, but I still like you. <laughs> Do you have the strength to say that? And I thank you for all the good things you have done. And then we can say, okay, I'll try to do my best to, to be nice to you. Sorry if I've done something wrong. Now that is not eating the garbage. Can you do it? But you say, it's unfair. It is him who hurts me. It is now I use an illustration in Chinese Kung Fu. Now, if you hit me with a fist, instead of taking it, do you want to take it when it hits you? No. Now I can do this. Turn it away. Turn it away. Turn it away. That way, even if he hits very hard, I turn it away. I don't, I don't take it. So we discern this person has his sinful nature. But if I've done something wrong, I will ask him to forgive. And I will try my best to improve. So that you know he won't have so many chance to attack me or accuse me. So I have a good testimony. At the same time, another thing is I have compassion on him. Let me tell you, people who hurt people easily. Think of the people who hurt others easily. Can you think of one person now? Can you think of one person now who, who, has, who has hurt you many times? Let me ask you. Have these people have these people grown up in love? Have they grown up in love? Have they been loved? by people. Usually, no. People, people who grow up, grow up in love, they usually are more nice to people. And people who grow up in hatred and spanking, and, and, to, 
and criticism. They will criticize us easily. So actually they have a very poor background. And then I can have compassion on him. And I can say, I want to bless him and help him. I want to forgive him. And forget about all his bad things. Now that is victory. To overcome wickedness with goodness. That is total victory. Now, but some people do this. Yeah, if someone is not nice to us, they might not fight back. But what they do, they turn the face away from them. The moment they see them, they show an unhappy face because they don't like them. Is that victory? No. Victory is continue to be nice to them even when they're not nice to us and God will be very happy with you. Okay, now let me share with you some of my real experiences. I actually, I was a pastor and a seminary professor in the traditional church. And after I experienced the Holy Spirit, actually I did better as a professor and as a pastor. But in the church at that time, they, they opposed me. It's actually most people in my church like me very much. It's some people in the main church in the administration they don't like me. And they plan to do something to attack me. Finally, I left the church. And left the seminary. And at that time, you know, especially one person, uh, she was really doing something very terrible. At that time, I, in my heart, I thought, one day God will punish him, punish her. But when I thought that. God changed my mind. Don't think like that. And then I prayed to God. I said, I pray that she will be faithful to God in her way. She's not open to the work of the infilling of the Holy Spirit. But that is her problem. But According to her way, if she's faithful to God, one day God will say to her, you're a good and faithful servant. I pray that that will happen to her. And I also pray to God, if I can see her again, I want to say something nice to her. But I did not see her again. Now, what I said is, at that time, I was really greatly hurt by her. Also, some of the people too. Now, another experience. After I experienced the Holy Spirit, I called someone and told her that told her about my experience. But she was very angry. She did not accept the infilling of the Holy Spirit. And she was angry with me. When I hang up the phone, when I pray again, I lost the joy of the Lord. And then the Lord spoke to me. You have to handle this. So I call her up. Now I cannot apologize for sharing because 
because it was right for me to share. But I said to her, if I made you unhappy, I'm sorry. So if I made her unhappy, I'm sorry for that. And she was still angry. And when I hang up the phone, I said, I've already handled it. And then I, I just say, I put it down. And I'll keep praising God. And I had a joy again. And God told me that. From now on, if, if anyone hurts you, don't take it. And just put it down. And rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Let me give you another example. One time there was a person who did a lot of evangelism. But he did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit. Okay, now this person, and I know a pastor, who is open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And he introduced me to this man who is not so open to the work of the Holy Spirit. And this pastor introduced me to him to me uh, to think that, you know, maybe he can bring me somewhere to do ministry with him. And then this person took me to a pastor. And then you know, I share with the pastor what I, what I do. And then I said, I've revived people's spiritual life. I trained them for ministry. But when he heard it, he was very unhappy. And then one day he came back to me with, the, with that pastor. And he spoke to me for a long time. He said, you think you're better than the other pastor? <laughs> his church is so big. Do you think you can revive his church? You said you revive people's spiritual life. Are you better than he? Now, I didn't mean anything like that at all. I just said, that's my ministry. But he did not accept that. And he kept talking to me for a period of time. When I listened to him, immediately I discern. The first point is discernment. He doesn't accept the work of the Holy Spirit. And now he's very angry. And he thought I was proud. So I just listened to him. And let him finish. And actually I forgot what I said. I did not say anything unpleasant to him at all. I just said, maybe, God bless you. And then he left. And then the pastor said to me, you are really something. In the whole process, he was so angry with you, you were not showing any anger at all. You did not fight back at all. You know, I told him, because I discerned he did not accept the work of the Holy Spirit. It's no use to argue with him. I discern that it's no use to, you know, to argue, so I choose, I chose to be quiet. I chose to be nice to him. Mm. Now, this is what I meant. Turn off garbage. Now, let me tell you, even strong Christians sometimes have garbage. 
Now sometimes your pastor is very busy. And then you ask him a question. He said, don't ask me now. Now it doesn't mean, it doesn't mean he's a bad person. Yeah. He, he was just in a hurry. And you are asking him all these questions. And so he said, don't ask me now. And then, and then, and then you might be hurt. And you said, Pastor doesn't like me now. I want to go to another church now. I don't like him. He's taking it too seriously. We, we, need to accept, we need to accept that all people have chances of being angry. Or, or frustrated. <laughs> when he's frustrated. Now, there's also some garbage coming out. It's anger. But I, don't have, but I don't have to take it. And this person is not garbage. <laughs> But what he said here, I don't have to take it. Amen. That way we can turn off the negative words. Let me ask you, is it workable for you? Yes. yes. You have to discern. The first point, say, you have to discern. Are there some people around you who say unpleasant words, negative words? Yes. Can you discern it? But at the same time, we don't hate them. Mm. These people can be turned by God to a good person but he has just taken too much garbage in him he has been hurt by people too often so when he speaks <laughs> all kinds of garbage comes out because Jesus said that you know the good person from the goodness in him will speak good words and a wicked person from his wickedness inside him will speak wickedness so when you discern it, then you be prepared. Let me tell you, I have in in my ministry in a country, in order to support myself, I've been a chaplain in a hospital. Most of the people there were not Christians. And they don't like Christians. Some of them, some of them don't like Christians. But there were a few Christians there. Now because I, you know, let people know I'm a pastor. There were one, one Christian who works in a hospital. Every morning when I walk by her, actually to everyone in the hospital, I always greet them by name. And I said, good morning. And then every time she did this to me. Good morning. <laughs> so, even if she will, she will finish, good morning. Every day, for a few years, it's always like that. Now, when I saw that, I felt a little unpleasant. Why can't she just, you know, be normal and say good morning? And I felt unhappy. But I realized I have to handle it. 
If not, I'll be affected by her. So when I see her in the distance, I prepare myself. Praise the Lord. The Lord loves me. The Lord is with me. The Lord can be straight. And what she says is not important. And then I go over. And then say her name. Good morning. Good morning. And then again she said, Good morning. <laughs> and then I turned around. I said, God, you don't treat me like that. It doesn't matter. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And I forget about it. So every day when I saw her, it was like that. And there were some people I greet in the hospital. They don't show a good face. <laughs> and then I have made up my mind, I don't want to be affected. And when I have a chance to say nice words to them, I'll do that. And let me tell you too, for years, there, there have been people who said negative words to me, for years. And I learned to handle that in my heart. After I experienced the Holy Spirit. Because I want to keep the joy. So I turned around. I turned around. After they said negative words. I say, Lord loves me. So Hallelujah. Rejoice in the Lord. Hallelujah. And the Lord is so good. And after years of doing this, I can discern people very quickly. And I can turn off people's negative words. And even when situations are not good, I still choose to be joyful. Basically, the teaching is don't take garbage. And don't hate person. Pay back wickedness with goodness. Now, now some people say, well, that person is my husband or wife. And, and then he takes away my money. And he makes life so difficult for me. How can I handle that? Now it's difficult. Whether it's your husband and wife, or your children. <laughs> now, some mothers talk to me, and they said, Can you talk to my son? And she said, My son doesn't work, doesn't go to school, only stay in the room every day. And then I said, okay, if you can arrange for me to see him, I'll see him. And then she called her son. When she called her son, she talked like this. Why don't you want to see the pastor? The pastor is trying to see you. Come and see him. But the son refused. <laughs> and afterwards, I asked the mother. Have you noticed how you talk to your son? She said, I guess I was a little frustrated. Now we continue with how to handle negative people. So, so